Hey guys, welcome back to another Meet Victoria with Caleb Shaw. This episode, we are at the historic Nave Museum, and I'm pretty excited. They just got in their new Carol Myers Journey exhibit. My buddy John Henry's inside. He's going to give us a tour, and I hear they've got some advanced art classes they're going to let me join. So let's go start the adventure. Take a peek inside. you think digital marketing, think ThriveFuel. Websites, social media marketing, advertising, and much more. ThriveFuel is professional digital marketing. Welcome to Meet Victoria, where we'll get to know the people, businesses, and heroes that make this community special. I'm Caleb Shaw, owner of Shaw Realty and your host. Now let's go meet Victoria. Thanks so much for having us, man. Hey, Caleb. Glad you came. Uh, let me give you an overview and a tour of the uh, museum. So right now we're having our Carol Myers exhibit. She passed away in 2017, so this is the first retroactive exhibit, so it focuses on six decades of her work. She was an abstract landscape artist, and she worked in acrylics, watercolors, and a lot of mixed media. So we have the front gallery all filled with Carol Myers' work. We also have a back gallery, and then we have a mini Royston Nave gallery, and that's who the museum was built in honor of. Awesome, well let's go check it out, man. Awesome, well come on. So this is our Royston Nave gallery. This is who the museum was built in honor of. Mr. Royston Nave did a lot of oil paintings. So we have six of them on display. We have 44 of his paintings in our collection. So we're just really, enthusiastic that people get to have a chance to come and see all of Mr. Royston Nave's work. Yeah, this is pretty cool, man. Uh, so this is an interesting piece. It's called The Message. It's inspired by the persecution and violence against Christians in South America. There's a lot of hidden message in here. You see right here, she writes, we will not be silenced. And it's still an abstract landscape, but there's just so much hidden meaning in this painting. Wow, that is pretty deep when you actually start looking at it now that you know a little bit of the history behind it. Wow. And all of these paintings are just different places. So you'll see a lot of New Mexico, Utah, Arizona, also different parts of Mexico. So it's just like if you're traveling all around the world. Yeah, really neat, man. Really neat. So I always see in art movies, you know, what does this piece say to you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what does this say to you? What uh, um it almost looks like musical notes to me. Like, that's what I first thought when I, that it was some type of musical mm -hmm. piece was my first original thought. And I don't know if I pulled that out because of this or, or what, but what does this piece say to you? <laughs> well, I think you're on a really good track of what it stands because a lot of them is inspired by music also. So you'll see musical notes, uh, pieces of script music or sheet music that's been layered on here. So jubilation, she also calls it ascension. It's a very happy piece, happy music, just something bringing life. Furniture Warehouse Direct, we pride ourselves in offering the best quality of affordable furniture in the Crossroads area. Come inside and shop your favorite brands or order direct from our website. We have multiple financing options to get the furniture you need in your home. Why pay retail? Buy direct at Furniture Warehouse Direct and FurnitureWarehouseDirect.com.
we just wrapped the kids' art class, and that was a ton of fun, and I learned a lot. But let me just back it on up and introduce you to the amazing instructor that helped guide me towards this masterpiece. <laughs> if you would, introduce yourself, please, ma'am. I'm Claire Santiana. Well, Claire, you did a great job today, and, and let me just go ahead and do my grand reveal here. This was my first attempt at, at, at artful masterpiece here, and, and you know, I'm actually pretty proud of this thing for a first go around here, but this is our original. Tell me a little bit about this painting and the author real quick, and, and what we were, whose work we were trying to make today. So this is by Carol Myers, and she has a lot of really fabulous artwork. I really love her use of color and texture. So we were focused on color today, and I think you did master complimentary color there. Well, thank yeah. you. And you know, and this was one of these things I told you off camera that you know I. I hadn't talked about mixing colors in, since, mm -hmm. I don't even know when, second, third grade, maybe maybe later than that, but instantly, you know, I was marveled at, at how the kids were so quickly responding to mm -hmm. primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors. It wasn't just grab your paintbrush and slop a bunch of paint on here and go. What are you trying to accomplish with these art classes? And, and when you're in here with the kids, I mean, I get that, hey, we're going to paint something today, but I think it goes a little bit deeper than that. And, and what's your... What's your line of thought when you're going into doing this? Well, I feel like a lot of these schools don't have art, with, especially with COVID. Art's been taken out just because of safety measures, and they really do need that art foundation. And learning about colors um, will help them being able to look at artwork and later when they're learning about artwork, or even in the ads we see, you know, that there's a lot of thought behind those. And um, all of the elements of art are even in the movies, even in animation, and knowing what goes behind it, maybe they'll be future artists. Maybe that'll be their career. Well, and that's, that's what got me to thinking so much is, is on the color wheel, the way, you know, the, the complementary colors, you know, you mm -hmm. take those and that makes this. And, and, all, and it, was, it was so much deeper than just grabbing a box of paint or crowns and, and, and going to town here. And it, it, it really kind of humbled me in a sense that like, okay, I need, I'd forgotten all this stuff, but Again, there's just so much more than grabbing a paintbrush and, and going. There's a, this deep knowledge of colors and what mixing these colors will bring and then highlighting that and, and you know, all of this. And so, um, yeah, this is just a great thing. And, and I'll tell you, for the kids, every one of the kids in here was having a ton of fun. They were engaged in it. It's just a great activity. You know, it, it, it gets them in here. It's doing something different. And I just think it's a ton of fun because they're learning in the process mm -hmm. of, of having fun. And, and you were a great teacher. You did a phenomenal job Thank with you. that. And, and uh, really appreciate you having me, letting me join in the class. And, and again, you know, I made this. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they're going to want to take that one down and, and put this one up when I leave, and, and I might let them, but it's probably going to go on my fridge, not going to lie, but thank you so much for your time. No thank, you, thank you for letting me join in, and, and guys, like I said, get your kids up here and roll them in these kids' classes. They'll have a ton of fun. Heck, call them. They'll let you sit in on them as an adult, too, and sit in the back and make it and try to be mine, see what you can do with it. We'll be right back. From early on, I found a huge love of the outdoors. My favorite part of being a child was going out to my grandparents' ranch, feeding the cows and fishing in the tanks and running through the pastures. There's nothing better than being outside, in my opinion, which is why I love this part of my job so much. Keep me, Corey Urban, in mind when you start looking for that ranch, farm, or recreational property. Give me a call at 361-649-1357. I promise I will find the perfect property to suit your needs. All right, guys, welcome back. Man, we've had a ton of fun today. We got to do the art class. We had the tour. I'm so very grateful, man. I had a ton of fun. Um, for those that don't know you, though, if you wouldn't mind, please introduce yourself and tell us what your role here at the Nave is. My name is John Henry Castillo. I'm the executive director. Good deal. Good deal. Well, man, again, I appreciate you having us. Thank you for the tour and stuff. I like this building, man. This building is cool. It's got a cool feel to it. The big old Greek columns out front. Tell me a little bit about it, man. So there's a lot of history to this building. This building was built in 1932 by Emily McFadden for Royce Deneve, her husband, when he passed away. It was built by Adler Ayers, who is a famous architect in Texas, and he built a Roman Greco building. Uh, the building was built to house Mr. Royce Deneve's paintings and later became Victoria's first library. It was a library until 1976, and then that's when the Victoria Regional Museum Association took ownership of the building, and since then we've been a fine arts museum for 45 years. 
Wow, so this was Victoria's first library. First library. It was the Bronte Study Library, or the Bronte Study Group. Uh, they were the first and oldest female literary study group in the state of Texas, and they were able to form Victoria's first library. Wow, that's pretty cool, man. And and this is just a this is a little bit more than just a normal museum. Talk us a little bit about this. I know one of the big deals is is of course the Nave exhibit. Mm -hmm. You know, let's talk a little bit about that. So we have a permanent exhibit for Mr. Royston Nave. We have 44 paintings in total by Mr. Royston Nave. They all have been restored. He worked in oil paintings. He did a lot of landscapes of Texas and different places that he traveled, like Colorado. He also did portraits, which are American realism, and they just look like they were photos. He does an amazing job capturing lifelike images, and he does a lot of still lives. So we rotate out Mr. Royston Nave's work about twice a year, so there's always something new. Gotcha, gotcha. And one of the other things that, that you guys do that's really cool is is you all have exhibits that, that rotate through here, and, and I think you told me about five exhibits per year? Yes, yeah, so we do five exhibits per year. It always changes. It's always visual art, so we have different style paintings, all different type of mediums. We also have sculptures, woodworking, just we try to have a, a large variety of work, so it's something new every time you come in. And, and one of the things within that that makes you guys even more unique and more special is it's you don't stop with just these, these exhibits coming through these five ex exhibits per year. You guys actually have classes within that where you do these art classes, you know, four to five art classes about the exhibit that, that comes in. And, and that's what we did today. Tell us a little bit about that. So these classes are really special since the children are able to come into the museum and see the artwork in person and then they get to make their own work that's inspired by the current exhibit. And the classes are never the same. They always change mediums. Uh, today we worked with acrylics. The following week we'll do watercolors. And we just always are trying to change it so you learn some new techniques, uh, learn a little bit of art history, art lessons. And we just try to keep it enjoyable and fun. Well, and, and you guys did a great job on that because it was a whole lot more than just slapping down some paint on a, on a picture. There was learning involved. There mm -hmm. was skills being taught. And, and the, the learning of matching this color with this color or mixing these two makes this. And, and, and I, I thought it was so neat that you had the kids in this immersive environment where they're, they're surrounded by the art and then they actually get to get the thought process of what the artist did to make that and then they get to try to emulate it which I just thought was great and I had a ton of fun doing it you know I I, I think the parents should just come in here and try to sit behind the kids and, and do it themselves because it was a ton of fun what can we do well first and foremost how are you guys funded and, and how do you survive here and then furthermore what can we do to, to back you to make sure that you guys know that the community is behind you and you continue to thrive so the museum is a 501c nonprofit. So we run on generous donations of visitors. Also, we look for business sponsorships. So if someone wants to cover an exhibit, we allow that. We also have our membership, and membership is very important. The membership helps fund the operation here. It goes to the art classes, and you get a lot of benefits. So you're able to come on opening night, uh, meet the artist, have some refreshments. And so, again, it just helps the museum. It helps us operate. It allows us to have our doors free and open to everybody. And that's, that's, that's a good point to, to wrap on. This, these tours are free. You can, people can come up here. They don't have to pay a huge fee to get in. Donations are appreciated, I'm sure. But if you're dr driving by with the family and you happen to see this place and you got an extra 30 minutes, Pull over and you can come right in and, and, and they don't have to, to, this is free entry here. That's the most important thing. We just want people to come and enjoy the art, uh, enjoy all the activities we have and just be immersed in the art scene here in Victoria. Well, I felt very immersed today. I had a ton of fun. Uh, thank you to you and your staff. Everybody was so passionate about what they did. Um, everybody was so kind. And it, and it was just, it was a really fun day. And, and, and guys, I'll tell you, th these are the type of treasures that we have in this town that we need to make sure we support. We need to make sure that we come to these classes and come to these exhibits. And, and if you don't, you, you start forgetting these things. And, and you know, they survive off of our support. So 
Again, John, thank you, John Henry, thank you so much for having us in. Um, guys, come see the Nave Museum. Look them up online, support them, be a part of what they're doing. They're awesome in this community. And get your kids up here to these art classes or you just sneak into the back and go to one of the art classes yourself. I promise you will have fun. It's awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Put down in the comments how much you like the show. Share it with your friends, all that good stuff. And we will see you at the next one. Thanks for supporting us.